This is the great American West. This is Montana in all its glory. My name is Simon Parker. I'm a travel writer and adventure cyclist. And my new book, A Ride Across America, is all about just that, cycling across the United States in the lead up to the next presidential election. Surrounded by mountains and livestock and ranches and cycling along these long straight roads that go on for tens and tens of miles. This is utterly epic. I started at a place called Cape Flattery and Cape Flattery is the northwesternmost point of the contiguous United States. It's on the Pacific coast, about 150 miles west of Seattle. Now from Seattle, I cycled all the way through Washington state, across Idaho, into Montana, down into Wyoming, across Nebraska, into Kansas, and then from Kansas into Oklahoma, Oklahoma into Arkansas, Arkansas, Mississippi, Mississippi, Alabama, and then finally about an 800 mile ride, the length of Florida, all the way down to Key West, the southeasternmost point of the contiguous United States. These are the long, straight, and flat roads that I've been dreaming about for those first few weeks that I spent in the mountains. This morning, I've been averaging about 16 or 17 miles per hour, which is absolute warp speed. Pretty much unthinkable for someone on a heavily loaded touring bike. And I just feel determined to take advantage of this really, because while the conditions are like this with the wind blowing from my back, I feel like I should really make hay while the sun shines. I ride a custom-made titanium touring bike made by Van Nicholas Bicycles, and this thing is pretty much indestructible. The only thing that did go wrong while I was in the United States was a bit of wear and tear on the tires. I got through four tires in the end, and if I was gonna give you any advice about doing something as silly as this yourself, it would be take European tires with you, like a Schwalbe Marathon or something like that. They are so much better designed than American tires. I've been making brilliant time today, thinking that everything was going swimmingly, and now I have sustained a very, very, very bad puncture. Back tire is completely lacerated, so I'm just gonna have to try and patch it up as best as I can on the side of this quite busy road. I was just starting to salivate at the prospect of a cold beer. I'm about 70 miles in. I've got about 10 or 12 miles left. And then this happens. The main point of this adventure was to travel slowly across the United States and really try and see another side of the country that many journalists, many film crews never usually get to perceive. It's something which doesn't normally get documented. So what I wanted to try and do as a journalist was meet people as organically and as at random as possible. So I met all sorts of fascinating farmers, musicians, I met teachers, I met policemen, I met lots of people working on the railroad. And one of those men was a guy called Bryson Hare. And he told me how many people in the United States had started to lose faith in their political system. How do I feel about the United States? I just feel like we're separated as a whole. I feel like People don't know who they are and people are scared to explore things and try new things. People are so separated and poverty is so high right now because of inflation that a lot of people are just lost. We are lost, we are lost place right now and it's scary because you can't even, 
you can't count on your president either. Like, you know, we, we don't know what we're getting told. You ask, I bet you you could ask 70, you could probably ask 85% of people my age what a Democrat or a Republican is. And I'd say about 75, that same, you, you ask everybody my age, 22 years to 18 to 22 years old, what, what uh, party is Joe Biden from? They won't give you the answer. They don't know the answer. You ask them what a Democrat is, they don't know the answer. You ask them what a Republican is, they don't know the answer. People don't, they don't, they scared, they, not scared, but they just don't have the interest in, uh, they'll, they'll talk about it, but they don't understand, like, that we can make a difference. And, you know, they get stuck with that, that mindset of that nobody can make a difference, that, that, that the United States is down such a path that they've been taking since the, since the 60s. That you know we 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 gonna put ourselves in a hole pretty soon, and like I was telling you about conspiracy theories, a lot of people my age just they go crazy over conspiracy theories. People rather believe in aliens than believe in God. Having successfully got over the Rocky Mountains. Perhaps some people could argue that this landscape is quite boring, but I actually love it. I love these changing undulations and seeing America unfold at this gentle pace. And I think it's really important to see this agricultural land like this, because, you know, for a country of 340 million people, and then the 8 billion people around the world, it's these bread baskets, it's these vast agricultural lands that feed so many hungry mouths. And sometimes we can overlook those realities of the world that we live in. But by seeing it in the flesh, it really does give you a whole new perspective. I did this ride between August and the end of October and as I cycled further and further southeast I was pretty much chasing the decent weather. However, I did face some pretty significant thunderstorms and when I was in Nebraska I even got hit by a tornado. I have seen and experienced storms before all over the world but the one that's been going on for the last few hours has been way beyond anything I have ever experienced. The sun is now setting behind me in this extremely impressive fashion, but the wind that has been blowing in has been off the scale completely. This whole area of the Midwest is currently under a severe tornado warning and you can see away to the distance these ominous swirling clouds around us. It is absolutely mind-boggling that I was actually cycling in this just a few hours ago before I managed to seek refuge. There's lightning all around me flashing above the Burger King above the McDonald's. There you go. Wow, you didn't see that. I came out just to document it briefly, but I think the sensible thing to do would be to get inside as quickly as possible. I would say probably the prettiest landscape I saw on the whole journey was probably Alabama. It took me about three and a half thousand miles to reach Alabama and this was after being in the, the Great Plains of the United States where pretty much everything is flat for about 2,000 miles. And I arrived in Alabama and I really didn't know what to expect and I was just faced by these immense forests filled with birds of prey and big herds of deer and I remember getting there with just this feeling of having cycled almost all the way across America and there was just this wonderful buttery sunlight which was breaking through the canopy and it was just this incredible sense of 
having achieved something so massive, cycling across the United States. I have made it to Alabama. And I must say, my first impressions are, wow. I don't know what I really expected, to be honest, but I've spent the last hour or so, wow, up there I just saw deer trotting across the, uh, the road. I've spent the last hour or so surrounded by lush forest. It's quite a cool autumnal morning, but this is a landscape I, I didn't really know existed. Quite phenomenal. I think I am going to very much enjoy this morning. The great joy of travel is seeing places with your own eyes and having your preconceptions challenged and changed. And I must say that that is exactly the case with Alabama. I don't know what I expected, but I wasn't expecting this. Firstly, I was expecting it to be a lot flatter, pancake flat. When I looked at the map of America, I was thinking, get across the Rockies and it would be completely flat thereafter. I was completely wrong. I've been doing a lot of climbing for the last couple of days. And also the great sense of space and forest. Again, I don't really know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. And that is why we all travel, isn't it? To just experience places firsthand. And rather than just trusting an image on Google or in a book, seeing it with our own eyes. I think this journey really proved to me that there are lots of people on social media or on news programs who scream the loudest. These people who have these really full on opinions about how divided America and how divided the planet is that we live in. But as a journalist, when you move very slowly and you meet people at a gentle pace on the side of a road and you really allow lots of so-called normal people to have their voices heard, you realize that there really is this plurality of opinions on all of the big subjects. And I think that's the thing that I really wanted to incorporate into my book. And I will hopefully try and incorporate into whatever comes next for me. Because I think as a journalist, it's very important to remember that there are 8 billion people on this planet and each one of them has a valid and important opinion.